Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivas. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And today I'm going to talk about what is somewhat of a controversial issue in the ketogenic space. And good friends of mine like Marco Cazella and Ken Berry and I have had some disagreements about, but although philosophically we're on the same page, we've had some disagreements about Ozempic with a GLP-1 agonist. And the reality is this, in clinical practice in America today, no matter what anybody says, the obsessive need for people, desire for people to lose weight, the obsessive desire for people to correct their diabetes is so overwhelming that they're willing to try this medication that everybody's on. And from the Kardashians to my garbage man, everybody's using it. There's more going out the back door of pharmacies than there is on the inside. In fact, uh, the company that makes Ozempic posted a $10 billion profit, $10 billion with a B dollar profit, on this medication just in the first six months of this year. That boggles my mind. But that's how much money these companies are making. So obviously it's being used. And so my philosophy is if we're going to use it, and I actually really like the drug. I, I promote it. I use it. I prescribe it. But And Ken Berry and Mark's, Mark Cazella's objection is to the side effects of the drug. First of all, the majority of people out there who are able to sustain a ketogenic, ultra-low carbohydrate diet for the rest of their lives, wonderful. Of course you don't need it. Folks, you know, I've done a recent little experiment. As you can see, I'm wearing a G7, a Dexcom G7 CGM, so I know what my blood sugars are every five minutes. I typically run fairly low. And you know that I drink heavy cream in my coffee every morning. And the purpose of the heavy cream is to get me into ketosis. Some people put butter in their coffee, some people put MCT oil in it, some people put heavy cream in. And this morning, I happened to put whole milk, not heavy cream in my coffee because I didn't have any heavy cream. And my blood sugar went up by 38 points, by 38 points in the course of 15 minutes and took about an hour and a half to come back down below 100. That's scary. That's scary. So I did an experiment. Instead of putting cream in my coffee, I used Ketone IQ. And Ketone IQ is a ketogenic product that also does what the milk in my coffee does. It puts me into ketosis and prevents me from eating. And the paradox is that when I had my morning coffee with ketones instead of cream or milk, my blood sugar went down by six points. It went down by six points and I don't know how long it stayed there because it, I fluctuate a little bit, but it stayed level. There was no bump. It stayed flat. So this stuff in the morning, uh, it also gives you a bit of a boost. But in the morning, instead of my um, cream, instead of my whole milk, um, and certainly I'm not a fan of putting MCT oil and butter in my coffee. I just don't like the taste. Or coconut. I just don't like the taste. It, it, it's fine to get you into ketosis. This is an alternative. If you're interested in trying, the promo code is down below in the show notes. But if you struggle with it despite your best effort, if you really put the effort in you struggling, I don't want you to be fat and diabetic. Why not use it as an adjunct to what you're doing? The problem that I have, and I think this is where Ken and Mark have an issue, is that the Ozempic for most doctors, they have no idea how to help their patients lose weight. All they know is they're fat, they correlate with cardiovascular disease. So what they do is they haul out their script and they write a script for Ozempic, off you go, go be skinny. And what's happening with these people is they're fat because 80% of, of their caloric consumption is carbohydrates and they're snacking all the time. And they've got metabolic disease, obesity, diabetes because of snacking and because of carbohydrates. But most doctors out there don't even understand that. They think that the obesity causes the diabetes, which it doesn't. Um, but be that as it may, they have no understanding of the diseases, but they know that this medication works. They don't even understand insulin resistance, which is the primary thing it deals with. They know it suppresses appetite and it's not dangerous. So they write the script. The problem with that is it's monotherapy. So what these people are doing is maybe eating a little bit less ice cream and instead of eating a whole pack of Oreos, they're eating three Oreos from the bag. So it's a caloric reduction for them. They are not changing the fraction of carbohydrates they're eating. They certainly aren't eating more fat. If anything, they're going to eat more vegetables and fruits and all that kind of crap. So, but because they're eating less by quantity and also less often, so the frequency, the snacking goes away to a certain extent and the quantity goes away. They're not overwhelming their system. Their system gets better, their diabetes gets better, and they lose a huge amount of weight. But in so doing, when they're eating a smaller quantity of crap, 
the amount of healthy nutrition that they eat, the protein and fat, also goes down by quantity. And the majority of the metabolic side effects that we see, particularly the ozempic trace, the loss of uh, skeletal muscle, which Marco Cazella is very worried about, that doesn't come because of the medication. That comes because their diet was crap to begin with. But because they were eating a lot, they were getting adequate protein in. Now that they're only eating a small amount, they're now running at a protein deficit and they're using the lean muscle mass to make that up. How do I know that? Because I'm a bariatric surgeon. And when we do certain bariatric surgeries, or I've stopped doing them, gastric bypass, I still do the other surgeries. But when we do gastric bypass and the patients are pooping out their calories as well as eating crap, 20 to 25 percent of a gastric bypass patient's muscle mass, uh, 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 body weight loss, is lean muscle mass for exactly the same reason. Now, if those people are eating a carnivore, a high, uh, a high animal product based diet, um, they don't have that as a problem. They still lose the weight, but if the percentage of what you're eating on a daily basis is primarily protein and fat, primarily fat with some protein, and maybe some vegetables if you want to throw those in, even if there's a fraction of carbohydrates, you're going to lose a lot of weight but you're going to be healthy. And the metabolic issues, so there's two issues here. The first is the starting issues, but the metabolic issues with regards to um, the GLP-1s are just not there. Those long-term side effects are just not there if you are able to reduce your carbohydrate consumption, increase your protein and fat consumption. Now, some people would argue if I could do that, I wouldn't need the Ozempic, but those folks are using it as a tool to change behavior, to motivate themselves, and to keep going especially on the tough times, exactly the same way we surgery. And that's how I use it in my practice. I use it as part of a multimodal transition of behavior. The other issue with a lot of these Ozempics and things is, and what makes it intolerable for patients is that they wake up one day and inject themselves with a drug. Now they're in insulin resistant and they're uh, in high blood sugars. And when they do that, GLP-1 gets triggered even at the low doses and it makes them feel terrible. They get headaches, they get diarrhea, constipation, they get gas cramping, they get gas bloat, they feel nauseated, they feel sick to their stomach, they're miserable. And what do they do? They blame the drug. They blame the medication. They blame the medication. This medication, in my opinion, should never be used as an outsource. It should be used as a tool to help you when you're struggling. So here's my tips or my tools for the ideal way to start a GLP-1. Get the prescription, get the medication, put it in the fridge. Start at the lowest dose and do that for about two to four weeks. Once you're used to the low dose, go up to the middle dose and never go above the middle dose, never go to the high dose. Because the risk of pancreatitis, which can be devastating and makes you allergic pretty much to this drug in the future, the risk of pancreatitis is a big issue. Don't do that. And if you need more, it's because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So that's the first thing. The second thing is once the medication is in the fridge, don't give it to yourself. Once it's in the fridge, take one week, seven to 10 days, but seven days, and plan out seven days worth of eating where you're eating two or three meals a day. I don't mind three meals a day, but no snacking. Have a drink, something like a coffee or something like that as your drink or crystal light or water. I don't care what the drink is, but no calories and no snacking. Get rid of the snacks. Three meals a day and make those meals as devoid of carbohydrates as you can have them. I don't care if it's mostly vegetables or mostly animal products or a a combination, but primarily be eating vegetables and animal products for seven days. And then, and that'll help to get you into a mild degree of ketosis. But then the day before you inject, try to do at least a 16, if not a 24 hour, 36 hour calorie free fast before you inject. So maybe you have lunch the day before and you inject the next morning. Or you don't eat on the day before and you inject the following day. So you want to go for a block of time where you empty out your liver of sugar, you bring your blood sugar down, you get yourself into mild ketosis if you can, so that the medication does not clash with and disrupt a hyperglycemic 
environment in your body. And in that way, you may still feel a bit queasy, but in that way, you uh, reduce the misery of starting the medication, that nauseated feeling, you decrease the gas bloat, you decrease the constipation or diarrhea side of things, whichever one you have, you have the best transition onto the medication. Preparing, your, preparing yourself for that week is ideal. The other piece of advice, if you can, is, and we do this in our practice all the time, prior to using the medication, get some blood work done. And then if you use it for a while, you can recheck your blood work down the road. And then the final recommendation, if you can do this, and this is the dichotomy of price, but the ideal thing to do, and you can see, I'm not, I've never used the medication except for two weeks on Ozempic, about five years ago. I've got a Dexcom G7. This is the Dexcom G7, or you can use the Freestyle Libra. But a CGM is an incredibly way, incredible way to monitor changes in your blood sugar. And if you're already hyperglycemic, you're running a blood sugar of 180, 200, and you drop down to 90 or even 100, that massive drop is going to make you feel miserable. That's why the week before, if you eliminate the carbohydrates, you bring your blood sugar down slightly and the, you tolerate the medication much better. So... And the key focus is for me is the preparation before you start the medication, which no doctor out there is going to be talking about, okay? Uh, because they either won't give you the medication or they just write the script and off you go. But the preparation is so important and will help you to do that. Getting the blood work, getting a CGM, those are the ideals. And then monitoring your progression. That's so important because the behavioral change that you make while you're on the medication is what's going to sustain you after you come off the medication. Because remember, the step trials with Ozempic, four of them, step one through four trials, demonstrated that as soon as people came off the medication, the, major the overwhelming majority of them gained some or all of their weight back within six months of coming off the medication. And how valuable was that to them? So please, if you're going to use this, partner with it. Don't outsource to it. See what you can do if you need help, if you need advice, if you need access to the medication in a program that is designed to help you stepwise. Give us a shout, 561-517-0642. Um, leave a message, WhatsApp us. Uh, we can't prescribe the medication out of the US because I don't, I'm not licensed to do so, although I am licensed in South Africa. Um, but beyond that, not licensed anywhere outside of the US, but we can do this anywhere in the US. Give me a shout. Leave comments down below. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I hope this helps.